I would like to first introduce Jessica Kurzane. Jessica is a PhD candidate in Yiddish studies at Columbia University, and her work centers on American Yiddish prose literature and questions of race and peoplehood. At Columbia University, Jessica teaches Yiddish language and also teaches modern Jewish history and literature at the Rebecca and Israel Ivory Prose Door High School at um, JTS, the Jewish Theological Seminary. Um, Jessica also holds a master's in Yiddish studies from Columbia and a BA in English from the University of Virginia. And she's going to be talking now about a class that she was teaching at Pro Store this year called Great American Jewish Women. Jessica, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Great. Take it away. So thank you very much for that, for that introduction. Um, so when I was thinking about what to say for this panel, what I wanted to do was talk about how I go about putting together a lesson plan for my Great American Jewish Women class and how I draw upon JWA resources to put all of that together. Um, so I'll tell you a little bit about the class itself and then I'll go through and tell you resource by resource what I use to build lesson plans for that class. The class is very, very small. I actually have only three students in the class. I have two ninth graders and a senior. And we go, generally I only have two on a given day, so I can't guarantee that there will be continuity. And we go from class to class, roughly in chronological order, um, talking about important figures in, um, in American Jewish history who are women. So um, if you can move to the next slide. Thank you. So the first thing that I do, when I'm setting out to write a lesson plan is I go straight to the encyclopedia that the Jewish Women's Archive has and I look for information, background information about the person. So you can search the encyclopedia for a specific person or you can search by um, the time period or by particular um, key words. So if you're looking for politicians, if you're looking for scientists, you can search in that way, and so that way, if you say, okay, well, I, you know, I really want to make sure that I cover all the bases and that I have a scientist, but I actually don't know anything about Jewish women scientists, and so I can't, I don't know where to start. Actually, you can search for that term um, and get a list of people and pick from there. So I would not usually share this encyclopedia article with the class. Instead, what I would do is read it for my own self for background information before I get started with planning. Um, but there are some other options as well. Can you move to the next slide? So, so I, we've used these ideas um, both to give some background research for myself, but also especially as homework assignments for students. So I might give them a list of people who I think are relevant to the people that we studied in class, but outside of the scope of the class itself, and say, go home, read about this person, come back and give us some key points at the start of next class. Okay, so that's the encyclopedia. The next part that I want to talk about is the go and learn lessons. These are um, a feature on the website that are, I would say they are broad in scope rather than, so the living the legacy lesson plans that a lot of people are more familiar with from the website tend to be fully developed lessons. Um, that give you step-by-step -step what to do, and these are kind of more a primary source with some questions and some thoughts about how you might use it in the classroom, and it gives it to you for multiple um, levels, so for, for a women's group, for um, parents, for children. What I do with it is I use it for the excellent primary source material and the suggestion of questions, and I go through and look at the questions for all the grade levels and use them as kind of brainstorming material for how I would talk about this, this material in my class. So we click to the next slide. So, um, so for instance, I used the Ray Frank text um, to talk about Ray Frank, but also it was the first um, lesson of the year for my, for my great American Jewish women class. And so I used it as a way to talk about some issues in talking about great American Jewish women. women. So what does it mean for her, to be called, given that title, if she was only in a leadership role for five years? What kinds of leadership can we expect from 
women in history and how is it different from what we might see of men in history. Um, and then I go into also sort of specifics of the speech. So she talks a lot about um, volunteerism and she, she um, says a lot about how great it is that women are volunteering and that that's maybe better work than paid work. And I had my students discuss and debate that topic. And so this was a way of, of bringing in sort of contemporary issues through the history. Okay, so that's the go and learn lessons. So the Women of Valor posters um, are physical posters that um, that I that I have and you can buy from the website, but they also come with all of these other resources on the website about these women. So I use these as um, ways to give background information about the women and to start talking about some of these important women. So if you go to the next slide. So this is a worksheet that I put together for use with the Women of Valor posters. So um, the three questions at the top are sort of generic questions, um, sort of fact-gathering questions. Why is this person important? What are some of the important events in the person's life? Um, and then the, the later three questions are more interpretive questions. I had them pick one of the three questions to answer. Um, one of the questions is, why, um, why would this be a woman of valor? Do you really think that this was, uh, that's a good adjective to use to describe this woman and what other adjectives would you use? One is about the Ray Frank sermon. So, so we had read the Ray Frank sermon earlier in the class and it's, it's tying these, the posters of other women into that sermon. Um, and so I have used this worksheet for a number of different classes, coming back to it over and over again as we learn about new women and introduce them through the posters. Okay, uh, next slide. Okay, another thing that I did in my Great American Jewish Women class is really encourage the students to think about people in their lives as being Great American Jewish Women. Um, and so I held a class where I went through the guide to performing oral history that is on the website. And it has a number of sample questions that are very, very rich. Um, and it gives you a sense of how to conduct um, an oral interview. It gives you advice like, don't insert your own conversation too much. It tells you what kinds of questions to ask. We went through it, and I arranged a lesson plan around it. And then I told my students to go home and interview a family member and come back and talk about it. And this was, I think, one of the most successful things that I did with the class. Um, it really helps the students to tie in their own personal experiences and their family histories with the histories that we were learning in the class. Uh, next slide. Okay, and then one more thing that I really wanted to make sure to mention um, is the feminism exhibit, which is also on the JWA website. This um, gives you a really broad overview of Jewish women and the feminist revolution through specific artifacts. So rather than having a narrative history of what feminism is, it gives you a um, broad range of artifacts that represent themes within the, um, the feminist movement. And, um, and you can use specific artifacts, or you can use the whole exhibit as a way of representing feminism. You go to the next slide. So I've used this for a number of different things. One way I used it was for specific documents. So I taught a, court, a, a, um, a lesson on women in the American rabbinate, and there are letters that Sally Prezant, who was the first reform uh, woman rabbi in America, exchanged with her seminary as she was applying and trying to um, figure out if she could be ordained as a rabbi. And so those letters are on the exhibit. You can um, pull them up um, maybe on a, on a projector and talk about them that way. Another thing you can do is talk about a particular issue, a particular theme, um, by looking at all of the different artifacts together and trying to create through them um, an understanding of the theme itself. And then the third thing that I think is really interesting is to kind of work backward 
and say without giving them an introduction to what feminism is or what how Jewish women engage with feminism, first give them the exhibit and let them take the time to browse themselves um, and look at specific artifacts and come up with a working theory of what feminism might be and as a as a branching out point for discussion. Okay. Um, so that's those are all of the things. Basically what I wanted to do was give you a broader sense of all of the things that are available on the website outside of the specifically written lesson plans um, of the of the Living Legacy project because um, I think that the, the website has a lot more to offer than just those specific plans and I wanted to make sure that everyone was familiar with all these different resources. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jessica. Um, does anybody have any questions for Jessica about some of the specifics of the work that she's been doing? Okay, great. So, um, Biggie is asking if your students self-select to be in your class, Jessica. Yes, they do. Um, so I have three students, it's an elective, and, um, and they've chosen to be there. Great. Um, and are all of your students female? Very wonderful. Yes, they are. I have I have three uh, girls this semester. Have you? I know you've taught classes in the past using this material. Have you had um, uh, young men or boys choose to be in your class? Yes, last semester I taught a, um, a course based on the Living the Legacy curriculum uh, about civil rights, and that class was five students, and it was. Um, two boys and three girls. Um, and they were very responsive to the material. Great. Thanks for your questions, um, Faggy and Sherry. Do you, does anyone else have a question for Jessica? Um, so Faggy is also wondering if you would suggest this material for eighth graders. Jessica, you're welcome to speak to that and then I can also talk a little bit more. Yeah, um, I definitely would, would recommend it for eighth graders. I think sometimes, um, I definitely feel that there are parts of the Living the Legacy curriculum that fit better for eighth and ninth and parts of it that fit better for 11th and 12th and sometimes there was, um, I had to do a lot of work to um, to make sure that I was teaching the right pieces to the right group of people. Um, so I definitely think that there is a lot of material there that fits um, eighth graders, and it's just a matter of going through and, um, and finding the pieces that you think are most appropriate. Yeah, um, I would just agree with Jessica. We're lucky to have such a great spokesperson for our material. Um, <laughs> We, most of our material is designed for use in high school, or I usually say grades eight through 12. It really depends on your students, on their, you know, personal interest or passion for the material or for you as an individual educator. A lot of teachers, just kids like them and enjoy being in their class and it makes it easier to bring some material that other teachers might struggle with. Um, and it's also knowing your students and knowing are these the kinds of students that really want to sit down and read a two page letter and dig into it and talk about what it means and um, go about it that way? Or are these students that would be better served by reading an excerpt of the letter and maybe also looking at some historical photographs or watching a film clip and having that be how they get at the material and then engaging them in a different way. And some of our other um, panelists, both, in this session and in the videos from yesterday's session have some ideas for different ways that they've used this material. Um, and I should also say that as the education program manager, my job is to help educators like you who are teaching this material. So if you ever need help identifying what um, pieces to use or how to adapt a, a specific resource to meet your needs, I'm happy to talk with you more about that. 